Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. I have a very special quilt that I quilted and it is my mom's first bed quilt. I know it's usually that the mother passes the sewing skills on to the daughter, but in our case, I learned how to quilt when I was bored after college. So now the daughter's passing the skills on to the mom. So we worked a little bit uh, while we don't live near each other. We're about three hours away. So we've worked a little bit over time, uh, getting her to the next steps, but she did the majority of the construction all on her own. She did one of my early patterns, the five hour bed quilt, which will take five hours if you are an experienced sewer. If you are a brand new person, maybe five months if you're working on it on and off in between life happening. Um, but it, it was a lot of fun. It uses layer cakes. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna buy uh, a layer cake, which is a pack of 10 inch squares that are pre-cut for you. And then you're gonna cut your background fabric and you make a giant disappearing nine patch. And it goes together fairly quickly because it's big piecing and half of it is already cut for you. And so you just get to concentrate on things like you know, getting your points to match as best you can for your first big quilt. We actually have a bunch of layer cakes in stock, so you can make sure to check those out. If you're getting this in an email, we'll have included it below, but also if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link in the video description and an eye above where you can check in what our current layer cake status is. Um, but, so when we were talking about how she wanted this quilted, um, we wanted to do like an all over design and I wanted to give her something special because this is a special quilt, it's her first big one. But I didn't want it to be like super crazy custom. So I went to one of my favorite stencils of all time and that is the El Dorado. Um, I love this stencil because it's like, first of all, the first time I ever quilted it, I had perfect feathers. And let me tell you, I had tried and tried and tried to quilt feathers before this. I took a class uh, on the old Craftsy from Angela Walters. I read books about it. I doodled time and again, but I could never translate that into good looking feathers on a quilt. And I think it was because I was freehanding it. Like I would do my spine and I would try and do the feathers and they would just always be a hot mess and not look right. Um, so here, what we have is a line to follow and I'm gonna show you a little bit how that works in a minute. But having that line to follow helps me be able to execute it. Cause I can sew on a line, I can quilt on a line most of the time um, and that's helpful. But this is also a very like relaxing feather. It's not classical by any means. And interspersed in each one is a swirl, which I am very adept at doing on the long arm. So you kind of get breaks. You're gonna come in, you're gonna do a swirl, and then you have gotta think for a minute and do some feathers, but only four. Then you have a few more swirls. Then we have a few more feathers. And then another swirl and feather. And it works really well and it's interlocking because this registration mark will match up with this one on the one below when we are putting it together. So it's not like they're stacked. So if you make a mistake on one or you can't quite see the chalk line quite clearly, it's not like it's super obvious that you screwed up because the feather below is different than the one above. They're always gonna be staggered so that way that is not a problem. And the results are just fantastic. I love the texture and the quilting that this creates. It is just so pretty. And I think my mom is gonna absolutely love it. I ended up going with a like bone, um, like kind of creamy uh, thread that coordinates with this lighter fabric here because I didn't want to stand out on the lightest ones. And then it kind of disappears even in the darker prints. She kind of had a medium value for her background on this one. And it's just super, it's super fun. I'm really proud of her. And I was really glad to be able to quilt this for her. This is actually the Mother's Day gift for her. I gave her a card that said, coupon good for backing, batting, and quilting of your first quilt. So we finally got to do that. All right, so let's talk through how I did this. First of all, we have an entire video series on intro to free motion quilting. So if this is something that you've never seen before, like using these stencils and the pounce pads, and you're like, that looks really cool. I think this might be what I need to be able to do quilting on my home sewing machine. Absolutely, you can do it. And the series covers both long arm and uh, home sewing machine. We have demos on both. So whether you're trying to get better at free motion quilting on your long arm 
or you're just trying to figure out how to do it on your home sewing machine so that you can finish more quilts at home rather than send them to a quilter and keep the process of quilting a little bit less expensive, that's fine too. Um, so we have a video that's completely dedicated to how to use these pounce pads and stencils. It's a little bit different whether you're on the domestic sewing machine or the long arm. So we're going to link to that video, but I'm going to show you how I did it on the long arm because it's a little bit different than you're used to. So this chalk powder is meant to come off. It's in a chalk applicator. Um, we're going to fill the top of it and then we're going to bang it like 50 times on a hard surface, much harder than I just did. Um, and in order to push that through. So when this applicator comes, it is white. And as you can see now, I've used it a lot. It is very, very pink. Um, so you want to get that good and saturated. And then what you're able to do for the long arm is you want to get like an under bed storage container. So like I had one here that we keep our books in um, before they go out to you guys. Oh, the signed copies of Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts, I think was in this one. And um, that's perfect because you've got a lid and a flat surface because you need a flat surface in order to be able to push this across and make it work. So what I do is I just slide that under my long arm and then I loosen up my roller so that it can, the quilt can lay flat on top of that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up your stencil wherever it needs to be. And then you're going to slide the chalk pad across and you're gonna wanna bang in between each marking like two, three times to get a little bit more chalk coming through. So that way you have enough to clearly see the lines each time. And what you're gonna wanna do is there's different registration marks on this. At first, when you're marking, you're gonna be paying attention to the two on the sides here. So we're gonna start, um, when we move this over, we're gonna match this registration mark up with the one over here. And I just kind of slide that on top as best I can. And then later, when we are marking our second row, we're gonna mark this registration line on top of this one here. And that's what creates that interlocking triangles. So we're gonna just do one pass at a time, whether we're doing this on a home sewing machine or on a long arm, you're just gonna mark one row of quilting because like I said, this chalk is meant to come off and it will kind of float away as you go over it with your quilting foot, whatever it is you're doing and you want it to go away. One thing that I have found that does help is if I take my spray mister and I kind of spritz over it a little bit with water and then just let it sit for a second, it kind of helps the chalk settle down and it doesn't bounce off as easily. So that's a really good tip if you're having trouble getting the chalk to stay put. I've also heard that Best Press is really good, but I never had Best Press on hand, so I haven't actually tried that out. Um, then once you're ready to go, you're just gonna get started following those lines. And you'll see, uh, it's a good idea to have at least two colors of this. I have all three, the ultimate white, which you can iron away. And then I have the pink and the blue. The pink and the blue, you do not wanna iron ever. It will heat set the pigment into your quilt and then you're screwed. <laughs> so don't ever, do not ever, ever, ever iron on the pink or the blue that you'll be sad, you'll be crying. Um, but the white will iron away. So I started with that because I thought that will be much easier. I can just iron it and we have mostly dark fabrics. It'll be okay. And it was not okay. I could not see very well. Um, so I ended up having to switch to the pink for the second pass. So we're going to take a look at the play by play now of how I went through and quilted this. Now that you know the steps on how to get it marked. And again, if you need more in depth look at how to do that, we have a video tutorial that's done dedicated to do this, both for your domestic and for your long arm quilting, because it's a different process for each. So make sure you check out our Intro to Free Motion Quilting course, so that way you can see it and learn how to do it. There's one more thing that I wanna show you guys. Um, so right now we can still, actually a lot of it has come off already um, here, but the way I get this off is I just take a damp towel and I just kinda wipe across and I can still see some pink here. Sometimes you have to kind of get in where the grooves of your thread were because it sits a little lower and it likes to stick in there. Um, but it comes off really, really easy when you're doing this. Um, it is not hard. You also, um, I'm not gonna have this bound before I bring it to my mom. So I'm going to um, 
need to get it off before I bring it to her so she can see it in all its glory because she's got the binding. Um, but you could also wait till you have it bound and then just throw it in the wash and it should come off in the first wash, but always make sure that it's completely off before you put it in the dryer because the dryer would do the same thing as the iron and heat set that chalk. So just make sure it's all gone and you don't have to wipe some off before you throw it in there. Um, so with that, we're gonna move on to the play-by-play. -play. All right, so here's where you can see me working with that underbed storage container. I just slide it right underneath and then I'm gonna loosen up um, to make sure that everything is nice and flat on there, making sure I've got my stencil right side up there. It doesn't matter, it works from either way, but I was just trying to have it go the right way. All right, so here I am, I'm positioning it. When you look at the stencil, there are lots of um, blank space above and below. So what I'm doing is I'm positioning this top bit pretty close to the top. So here you can see I'm swooping that across. A lot of times people think because it's called a pounce pad that you pounce it, but it's not. You really are swooping across like this um, to get that to go through. And you can see that I'm peeking and I wasn't happy with how the chalk was transferring, which meant I needed to do a refill, with, so which I did off screen here. And then we're back to swooping across. And that's looking a lot better. It's not fantastic because it's the white, but I was really trying to go for being able to use the white so that way I could just iron it off. Um, but here I am taking the registration mark and I'm lining up the one here with the one that was left from the chalk right here. And once you have that aligned, you can also get your top aligned wherever you need it to be and do your swoops and you are good to go. I usually go over it a couple of times, usually like two times across each section. Um, and sometimes I don't get as much at the end, so I'll need to go over that a little bit again. So you'll notice right away that I stitch a lot slower when I'm working with a stencil. And that's for two reasons. One, I wanna make sure that I'm, I haven't done this one in a while, I wanna make sure I'm getting it correct. And two, the chalk powder does bounce off. So I wanna make sure that I'm doing a very good job of staying on the lines and not going so fast that I'm making the chalk powder bounce away before I can get to it and see where I'm supposed to go. So you can see it's pretty easy to see here when I'm on the darker fabrics. Those are the kind of more medium value backgrounds. Um, but when we get to some of the lighter ones, it's very difficult to tell where it is that I'm going. But you can see where I mean, where I say you have a couple of feathers to do. There's like three, four, and then we have a little bit of a break and then we're gonna pop around here. This is the longest stretch of feather that you're gonna have. And it's really nice because it's not a classical feather. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned and backtrack on a spine and all that. You're just kind of whimsically going around. And like I said, after trying and failing many times to do feathers, I was able to do this one right away. Um, and so then we get a little bit of a mental break. We're just gonna pop around and do some big swirls until we go back into our feather again. So it really is very nice because mentally it's not like super intense of a design. It's not like you have to be really thinking about it once you've done it a few times. So here we had like three or four and we're back to, to some big swirls again. And I can really clearly see that line. It's really easy to follow. And that is the end of that stencil. So here we're back on the second pass because um, I had switched over to that pink because you just could not see it very well when you got to some of the lighter ones. Um, so here what I'm doing is that again I'm just going super slow and you can tell that I didn't start at the very beginning of that stencil. It was offset a little bit because of making sure that those registrations fit in where they were supposed to. But you can see this is just my second pass. It had been a while since I'd worked with this stencil. I'm still going very slow. That's not for the benefit of you guys following along on camera. That is so that I can see where I'm going. And you can see right here, I'm a little confused. I can't tell exactly where it is that I'm going next. And so I'm kind of winging it. I know I need to do a, a swirl of some sort to get myself to the next feather. And so I just kind of went for it. And sometimes you have to do that in quilting. You know, either, you know, you got off with your stencil a little bit and you have your chalk lines are going over your stitching lines from the previous pass. And so you've got to bring it in. You got to make it a little smaller or some of the chalk may have gone away or you just can't see it that well on that particular print. 
Um, sometimes you just have to get to the next part. And that's easier to do once you've worked with the stencil several times. Um, like this is probably at least the third time that I've used this stencil on a large quilt. And I, I really love it. And so, but even then, like I said, I don't have awesome muscle memory with it. I've got decent muscle memory with it. So like here you can see, it's kind of hard to see the pink at this point. Um, but even here too, this is one of those lighter prints up here. I can see the pink. Um, much better than I could see the white on here, but it's still fairly um, light. And this is another reason why you might wanna have another, like it may have been better for me to use a little bit of blue in this section, um, but I, I had it, I didn't wanna get carried away with it. But you can see, I'm just kinda popping around, doing some swirls in between, nice little mental break, and then you can go back into the pink. And you can see how that chalk really shows up very differently depending on what your background is, which is why we always recommend that you get more than one color. Um, we use white in the intro to free motion quilting series because we're working all on very vibrant solid fabric, so it shows up really nicely. Um, but in the real world, uh, unless you are doing a very dark quilt, a lot of times you're gonna be in that pink or blue territory, so it's best to have uh, really all three. Um, and you can get refills for that as well. But you can see this is not like, it's not the hardest feather in the world. You just have to focus on having nice smooth teardrops as you're kind of going around there, or half hearts is probably the better way to say it. And you don't have to worry about matching it on the other side. You don't have to travel on everything because there's space right in between it. And the best part about these stencils are, even though you have a line to follow, if you get off of it, nobody's ever really gonna know because the, that chalk is gonna go away. You can already see that it kind of just bounces away as I go over it. You can see it all over that, um, the foot of the long arm actually. And it just, uh, it goes away. And, and you do, like I said, you have to wipe some off, but it's not, it's not awful. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching my quilting play-by-play. -play. Like I said, we've done El Dorado a bunch of times, but I wanted to share it with you again because it is just a fabulous, fabulous stencil. It looks great. The texture it creates is wonderful. It looks like it's way harder than it actually is. And I guarantee all your quilty friends will look at it and be like, oh, you did feathers, you did feathers. But it'll be like our little secret that it wasn't like the worst feather in the world. And literally the very first time I tried this, I did it perfect. The absolute first time after trying and failing many, many, many times to do feathers. So this is an awesome feather stencil to start with if you want to try to go at it and give it a go. Um, I've done it really well, both on my home sewing machine and on my long arm. It works well for me on both. Um, I'm not always, if you watch the series, I'm not always equal in my skill level on both machines. I, I have a lot easier time, for example, with swirls and wavy lines on my long arm than I do on my domestic sewing machine. So I can do this on both pretty easily and have it look really good. So that is a, a, a testament to a good stencil. All right, so you can get El Dorado stencil from Full Line Stencil, you can get the pounce pads, you can get all the things one needs to quilt at home on our website. We also have layer cakes and the pattern for the five hour bed quilt with the caveat that it takes five hours if you have been sewing for a very long time and are very confident in yourself. Um, that's to piece the top from start to finish. If you have not uh, been doing that, it's, it's gonna take a little bit longer. I think it took my mom about five months to get through this, um, working on it here and there in between life happening. Um, but her quilt is done now and we're gonna do the binding this weekend and it'll be a lovely. So until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.